Hi everyone, welcome back to Roman Villa's YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about uh, leisure batteries on our, on our motorhome. On our last visit over to France last year, uh, we had some issues with our leisure battery. It started to not hold its charge properly. It actually went flat on us a couple of times when we were off grid. We, uh, we decided to upgrade the leisure battery from a standard lead acid battery to an AGM battery which is absorption glass mat I'll put some links in the description that give you some more details on the batteries etc basically it's a, it's a better battery it has more cycle times uh, than the standard leisure ones so again from our dealer um, apparently up to 2020 models then the leisure battery that's fitted to our vehicles these vehicles up to 2020 was just a standard 95 amp lead acid leisure battery cheap one probably from 2020 onwards then chasson have been fitting an agm battery now the issue is with agm batteries and again if you read the links in the description you'll you'll see an agm battery needs to be charged at a higher charge voltage than a standard lead acid battery a standard lead acid battery is charging between 14.2 and 14.4 volts Whereas an AGM battery needs to charge at 14.6 to 14.8 volts. Not a great deal of difference, I hear you say. However, it makes a massive difference to the battery. If you don't charge an AGM battery at the correct voltage and you're still using the standard 14.4 volts, then it will only ever charge to about 85%. And also, if you leave it a long time like that, it will develop a memory. All batteries develop memories if they're only charged to a certain level. So you try and push it farther it, it won't take it after a period of time so it's important to make sure all the settings you have on your battery chargers uh, your battery to battery charger solar if you have it are compatible with an AGM battery so let's have a look at the problems first thing to check is your actual battery charger now wherever your battery charger is located ours is located under the seat down here now what I've discovered is that our battery charger in our chasson is not compatible with an AGM battery. It only charges to 14.4 volts and as I said earlier it needs to charge at 14.6. This particular battery charger is the one that's fitted up to 2020. I'll put some details again in the description and some pictures up here that you can you can see the different types. Uh, there are some settings with inside the charger. If you take the cover off the charger there's a jumper that you can set between lead acid and gel. The gel battery requires a different voltage charge again, but that's the only two settings. You can't set it for AGM. The newer battery chargers, post 2020, are a triple stage charger. They have three jumper settings, standard lead acid, AGM and gel. The next one to check is your battery to battery charger, which is located under the passenger seat which is that red box down there. It's a red arc battery to battery charger. And incidentally, your leisure battery is located there in that box, in that gray box, in that black box cover. The red arc unit obviously needs to charge at the right voltage as well. Fortunately, it's set to charge profile A, which is correct. It will charge up to 14.6 volts. So those of you that don't know, your battery to battery charger charges your leisure battery when you're driving. So when you're running your engine, it charges from your engine alternator through to your leisure battery. So again, that needs to be the correct setting. We've doubled up on our solar panel. I had an extra solar panel fitted. And when it was fitted, they had to fit uh, a, an upgraded solar charge controller. Our solar charge, our solar charge controller is located in the bathroom cabinet. I'll show you. So there's our solar charge controller there. It's an LS2024B, which is a 20 amp charger. The original charger was only a 10 amp charger because there's only one solar panel. So another solar panel is upgraded to a 20 amp charger. Now, what we have, and I fitted this myself, is a MT50 remote panel plugged directly into the solar charge controller. You can see what your solar charge controller is doing now. So it's putting it, pushing out 17 volts. Uh, 1.9 amps 28.5 watts so as you can see there which is a good example we've got a nice bright sunny day today so i'm actually pushing in 14.7 volts into the leisure battery which is which is good it's above the 14.6 
so I know our solar charge controller has the right settings. Now the other problem here is if you don't have an MT50, uh, they're not very expensive, they're only 20-30 quid. I mean even if you just plug it in and leave it you know loose inside the in a cabinet rather than installing it properly like I did. Uh, the issue is if you only have the solar charge controller fit and it hasn't been set up properly by the dealer, then it, it it's just got its default values in there. Now fortunately the default value uh, for the battery is sealed which if you read the instructions I'll put some descriptions again uh, is okay for an AGM battery so the settings when it's charging when it's on trickle on solar are correct for an AGM battery. One issue though there is a setting within your solar charge controller for the size of the leisure battery you have. Now the, the leisure battery default setting is 200 amps well our battery is only 100 amps i think you'll find most of your standard batteries are 9500 amps so you have to change that setting to 100 amps what difference it actually makes i don't know but it must make some difference if it thinks it's a 200 amp battery and you've only got a 100 amp battery then it must make some difference to the settings so if your dealer hasn't changed that by plugging into the solar charge controller which is highly unlikely they probably just fitted the, the solar charge controller and and waved you goodbye so then it's not got the correct settings in it so again you need to make sure the settings are correct and the only way you can do that is by plugging into the solar charge controller directly you can do that with the mt50 or i believe you can buy a, a lead where you can plug a laptop into it and download some software maybe a little bit too technical but again your dealer should be doing that <laughs> i'm sure if you ask them they're going to give you oh, i don't know stuff but that's what they should be doing the main reason for upgrading our solar system to two panels and the leisure battery to an agm battery we want to fit uh, an inverter only a small inverter just maybe i don't know maybe a 800 watt one just to cover the situations where we want to charge my, my drone batteries or i want to charge uh, a toothbrush charger or or beer trimmer that requires 240 volts. Uh, one thing, just a, a quick caveat, is there are some videos out there where people saying, yeah, it's dead easy, just get a three kilowatt inverter and connect it to your leisure battery and away you go. Be very, very careful because the current draw on the 12 volt side is huge. And you, you, you could burn your motor home down if you, if you don't know what you're doing, if you just follow a couple of videos online. So be very careful. So we're just going to fit a small uh, an inverter that will give us just that little bit of flexibility when we're off grid. So if you've recently upgraded yourself or your, your dealer's upgraded your, your leisure battery to an AGM battery, uh, then you need to check the settings that I've talked about. If you've gone lithium, your battery charge will definitely need to be changed and you need to change the setting on the red art unit because that has a, a different charge profile for for lithium batteries so you need to make sure all these things are correct so hopefully you found this video useful safe travels see you next time